You're listening to the I'm Busy Being Awesome podcast with Paula Angabratson, episode number 263. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are diving into a topic that I know so many of us ADHD brains navigate and tend to have, frankly, a lot of problems with. And this is the topic of prioritization. How do we prioritize effectively when our brains are wired differently and really struggle with it? Because prioritization is hard when you have an ADHD brain. And also, it's incredibly important. We want to learn how to do that. We want to learn how to put some additional supports in place so that we can prioritize more easily. So when we look at our to-do list and our schedules, it doesn't feel like this overwhelming uphill battle as we worry about trying to get everything done because it's equally important. My goal by the end of this episode is to help you have some very clear steps and approaches so that you can look at that list and go, ah, that's where I want to begin. Okay, so today we're going to talk about prioritization with an ADHD brain and look at specifically why this process is so challenging for so many of us. And then talk about some different approaches that we can use and some adaptations that I like to make specifically for ADHD brains to make the more traditional prioritization approaches more doable, okay? And we'll talk about how you can put these different strategies in place so you can start using them today. Now, before we dive into all of that, I want to mention that I do have a free download to go along with this episode because we're going to be talking about some different types of prioritization matrices, matrices, matrices. (laughs) And I think it can be helpful to have the actual matrix in front of you so you can put what we're talking about into practice. So it's all about different prioritization approaches that we're going to use today, all in a workbook for you. So if you want to grab that, you can head to imbusybeingawesome.com slash matrix, totally free, grab it and use it alongside this episode so you can start identifying more easily what's front and center for you. Okay. So like I said, we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about why prioritization is challenging for an ADHD brain, different approaches that we can use for prioritization, and then practical tips to implement this into your daily life. Now, the first reason why many of us ADHD brains struggle with prioritization is our executive functioning. Now, I talk about executive functions in basically every episode, but that's because it truly impacts almost every area of our lives. Now, the executive functions, they're located in the prefrontal cortex of our brain, right in the front part of our brain, and it helps with planning and breaking down projects and sequencing and focusing our attention and managing our short-term working memory. Now, when our executive functions are impacted, it's much more challenging for us to do these things. So when we think about it through that lens, planning, breaking down steps, putting them in the right order, of course, the brain has a hard time prioritizing and knowing what's most important. Number two on our list is time blindness. So a lot of us with ADHD have a hard time recognizing the passage of time. I love Dr. Barkley's description of time blindness, I've mentioned it before, but it's how the ADHD brain tends to experience time as either now or not now. We have a hard time seeing that in between. And this is so relatable, I think, for many of us, because when we're struggling with time blindness, it's hard to recognize that passage of time. Has it been 30 minutes? Has it been three hours? Who actually knows? Especially if we've slipped into hyperfocus. Similarly, it's challenging to estimate how much time we need to complete tasks, okay? So accurately juggling how long different components of one project will take, or if we have lots of projects going on, trying to figure out how much time we need for each of the different pieces there, which leads into trying to manage a deadline without some sort of clear external accountability can feel extra challenging. So we have this whole other component of time management and time blindness that makes prioritization more challenging because we're struggling with deadlines and not knowing how much time we need and not knowing how long things take and not recognizing the passage of time as it passes. Okay, so that's number two. 
And then the third reason why a lot of us struggle with prioritization is our distractibility, plain and simple. Okay, so for those of us with ADHD, staying focused on that prioritization process, let alone the actual priorities that we've identified is a major challenge. Our brains are constantly bombarded by distraction, both internal distractions and external distractions. So we have the internal racing thoughts and chatty mind that can make it so difficult for us to concentrate. It feels like there's this running dialogue in the background and it makes it hard to zero in on what actually needs to be done. And then on the flip side, we have external distractions. We have noises and notifications and people popping in and out of your office or whatever. And all of that can easily derail our attention on those priorities. And then the fourth clear obstacle to prioritization comes down to decision making. So again, a lot of us ADHDers struggle with decision making. When we are faced with multiple options, our brains can have a hard time trying to block out all the noise and choose one thing. The abundance of choice can seem really overwhelming for the brain. We have a fear of making the wrong decision or that we're not sure which one's the most important and, and we can get stuck in this analysis paralysis. And then that indecision leads to procrastination, this fear, this uncertainty of potentially choosing the wrong thing can leave us in that spin. And then we never actually take the steps forward on those priorities. Okay. And indecision is, you know, one of the, the sneakiest forms of procrastination. We tend to worry so much about choosing the wrong thing and then we don't choose anything and we don't start. So these challenges, the distractibility, the decision-making, the time management, our executive functions generally, all of these obstacles really come to the foreground when we think about why is it that prioritization is so challenging, right? It, it makes sense. Now, your brain may be thinking, okay, but if prioritization is so hard, why am I even bothering to try? This sounds like a real downer, Paula. <laughs> like, really? Is it worth it? Well, yes. Okay. There are several compelling reasons why it is worth it to lean in and put in the reps, put in the effort to learn how to prioritize effectively for your brain, okay? Especially when we have ADHD, because when we learn how to prioritize in a way that works for us, it often leads to a form of increased productivity, okay? So I think it's probably a safe bet that many of you listening to this podcast are looking for ways to get things done more effectively, more efficiently, so that you are focused on the things you actually want to be doing and not stuck doing a bunch of busy work, right? And when you learn how to work with your brain to get things done in a way that works for you, and you're doing that on the priorities that actually matter, that is so rewarding. Because again, we're not getting distracted by all the things vying for our attention. We are instead showing up intentionally, doing the things we genuinely want to do so that we are living that full life that we want, okay? Because once we've successfully identified our priorities, our brain doesn't have to worry about all the other stuff. It goes, oh, right, this is the thing I'm doing. This is the thing that matters. And when the other toddler part goes, but are you sure? You can go, yeah, we're sure. It's kind of like putting on the horse blinders that block out the non-essential tasks. It helps us really focus on what matters, the things that align with your priorities and your values in your particular season. When we learn how to prioritize, it also helps with significantly reducing our stress and overwhelm quite often. You know, when our brains are constantly racing, constantly thinking, oh my gosh, everything's important. I have to do it all now. It creates such a chaotic experience in our mind. And we often find ourselves jumping from one thing to the next. And we're creating all this attention residue as our brains are kind of moving from one thing to the next and it's smearing our attention all over. But when we can learn to focus on a few key things and the brain knows that that is what it's focused on, that becomes so powerful. When we can put the supports in place to make time for those handful of priorities throughout the day, throughout the week, the brain can actually relax. 
and stop worrying about having to do all the things. We go, no, I've got you. We're going to work on these handful of things, and this is when we're going to work on them. We don't have to do all the things all the time. We are doing these five things. Now, another critical component to prioritization and why I think it's really compelling to learn is that it often leads to stronger time management or I don't actually like the word time management because you can't manage time. It just keeps passing. But stronger management of ourselves within time. It's just clunkier to say it that way. But when we know our priorities, when we know our priorities and stick to them, it leads to that more intentional use of time. When we prioritize how we use our time, we become so much more aware of how long things take, how much time we need, how the time is passing. And this improved awareness, again, helps us to meet deadlines more effectively and make sure that we're showing up using the time in the way that we want to. Because with clear priorities, we're not constantly distracted, thinking about all the things. We are focused specifically on what we want to do when we want to do it. It's much more efficient and effective. And then finally, I think when we have effective prioritization supports under our belt, it helps to ensure regular progress on our goals as well, as long as we are actually prioritizing them. Right? When we are clear on our priorities, it helps us make regular progress on these long-term goals. Because without prioritization, those long-term goals can either completely take over and cause us to forget about all of our immediate things that also need to get done, or alternatively, those long-term goals get completely pushed aside because we don't leave any time for them at all. But when we create intentional time throughout our days, throughout our weeks to prioritize those goals, that's what ensures regular progress. So clearly, there's a lot of compelling reasons to why we would want to learn how to prioritize in a way that works for our brains. It helps us to use our time well, to focus on the things that genuinely matter, and to do so intentionally. So how do we do it? Let's talk about that because I think it can be really useful to have a handful of different prioritization approaches or tools in your toolkit so that we can be showing up with that intention. And one of my favorite approaches is the prioritization matrix. Now, the prioritization matrix is a four quadrant approach, and you'll see a lot of different types of matrices, but essentially, the matrix overall is this four quadrant approach. So imagine a square and then that square is divided vertically in the center and then horizontally in the center. So you have basically four squares within a square. Okay, so that four quadrant approach, I think it's a really great way to help us prioritize, first of all, because it helps us visually organize our tasks and it provides this really clear framework for making decisions. When we can sort these tasks into the quadrants of priority, we help to simplify the process. We help make it easier to focus on what matters most. Now, like I said, a prioritization matrix works by dividing the tasks into these four different categories. And there are many different approaches to it. The most traditional is dividing your tasks amongst the four categories based on urgency and importance. So if you're imagining a square that's divided into four smaller squares within it, this is our prioritization matrix. And the first way that is most traditionally used in terms of prioritization is the Eisenhower matrix, also known as the urgent and important matrix. If you are watching this on YouTube, you will see what I'm talking about. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you can pop over to YouTube and you will see what I'm talking about in regard to the different types of matrices that we explore today. So if you're a visual learner or you're quite new to the idea of the prioritization matrix approach, it might be useful to pop over and see visually what I'm talking about, but I'll do my best to describe it for those of you listening to the podcast. And then again, just a reminder to grab the workbook where I walk you step by step through all these different matrices as well. So that's I'mBusyBeingAwesome.com slash 
matrix. But I do think it could be helpful if you're more unfamiliar with the prioritization approaches with the matrices to see a visual of what I'm talking about here. But like I said, one of the most popular approaches is the Eisenhower matrix or the urgent important matrix. And this is how it works. So we have our four quadrants and the first quadrant in the top left corner is urgent and important tasks. So these are the tasks that require immediate attention. They have a significant consequence if it's not completed promptly. And of course, it's going to be different for everybody depending on what type of work you do, how you spend your time, the different things that are going on. So I probably won't give a bunch of specific examples, but for you in your life, it's the things that have a significant consequence if it's not completed promptly. There's some sort of urgent deadline connected to it. Then we move over to the top right corner, and this is the not urgent and important tasks. These tasks tend to contribute to your long-term goals, to future successes, and they're important, but they don't require immediate action. As ADHD brains, this is the one we tend to put off the most because we don't have the urgency behind it. We know it's important. We know we should probably figure out something for that big project that's happening in eight months from now, but it's so far off, right? It doesn't feel urgent. Or as an entrepreneur, you probably want to figure out something for retirement, but like that's so far off. There's no urgency in it as opposed to the emails that are coming in right now. And we kind of put off the important but not urgent, okay? So first of all, we have important urgent. Then in the top right corner, we have important not urgent. Then we go down to the bottom left corner, and this is urgent but not important. Okay, this is quadrant three. These are the tasks that tend to demand immediate attention, but they're usually not crucial to our long-term goals or have a long-term impact. So they often feel really important due to the urgency of it. They're often very alluring to the ADHD brain because we can pop in and we can do the things from that sense of urgency, but it's not actually necessary, okay? And then we have the fourth quadrant, which is not urgent and not important, okay? So these tasks are generally distractions and they don't usually contribute to long-term goals at all. My brain used to be like, what? Why would you even have that on a list? I've, I've changed my mind a little bit on that one. I now tend to think of it as these are the things that you might want to schedule, but they don't need to happen right now. They're things you enjoy. Maybe you want to play video games or you do want to go on and scroll Instagram for a while or you want to do some online shopping because you just got a sale to your favorite store or whatever, but it doesn't have to happen right now. You want to do it intentionally. That's what I might put in quadrant four. Okay. So to use the Eisenhower or important urgent matrix, okay, there are just some simple steps to do. So first of all, we list down the tasks that you want to complete for the day or for the week, right? So you write them all out. Then from there, you categorize the tasks into one of those four quadrants. So first, you have your important and urgent. You want to focus there first. Then you want to schedule time for your quadrant two tasks. These are the not urgent, but important tasks, right? So you want to make sure you're scheduling time in your calendar for those to prevent them from becoming urgent. Then we want to minimize or delegate as much as possible the quadrant three, so these are the urgent but not important. And then we want to either totally eliminate or plan for the quadrant four tasks. Okay, so that's when I mentioned maybe you do want to do some shopping, but you don't need to do it during your work hours or whatever. Okay, so that's the, the most traditional approach. It can work great for some people. However, I have found that for myself and for many of my clients, there are often some challenges with the urgent important matrix because as ADHDers, determining what is actually urgent and important is difficult. It's hard for us to know, is this actually important? Is it actually urgent because I'm super time blind and I don't actually know how much time is passing or how much time I need? So that becomes this kind of messy space 
to understand urgency versus importance and where they should go into those four different quadrants. And then also our brains tend to jump onto that quadrant three task list, which are the urgent but not important. Because of our impulsivity, because of our hyper-focus, we can have that drive, that motivation, that dopamine rush of doing all the things in the quadrant three, but they're not actually important. They don't actually move the needle, okay? So there are some obstacles here in terms of the Eisenhower matrix for an ADHD brain. If your brain is just like, no, I hate that approach, no problem. But I do want to mention it here. And I wanted to talk about some ways that we can make the Eisenhower matrix specifically more ADHD friendly, because I do know that there's a lot of teams, a lot of businesses who do use this approach. And so if you are in a situation where you need to use this type of prioritization approach. If you need to use the urgent important model, there are some ways that we can make it a little bit more ADHD friendly. So one of the things you can do is play around with color coding. Okay, so maybe you use colors to visually differentiate between the quadrants so that your brain can kind of start seeing more clearly where you want to be focusing your attention. So just in terms of visual reference for the brain to remember, oh yeah, I'm not focusing on this category over here. I want to be focusing most here. Visual color might be helpful. You could try that. Now, in addition, when it comes to actually prioritizing things, one thing that can be useful for the urgent important model to make it more ADHD friendly is to take these big projects that we're trying to put in the different quadrants and actually break them down first. So before we go into prioritizing which box they should go into, maybe we take that big project and we break it down into smaller steps and then prioritize those steps. Because if I just write podcast, for example, in urgent and important, great. I mean, that can work, but also is it actually urgent and important because I have a couple in the bank, so I don't technically have to, right? So there's this kind of messiness. But if I break it down and I have outline podcast and record podcast and edit podcast, I might be able to have greater leverage in where I want to put those within the four different quadrants. Okay, so breaking down that bigger project into smaller steps, maybe using something like goblin.tools or ChatGPT to help with that. If your brain freezes up, not a problem. Use those supports to break it down so then you can prioritize. And then additionally, remind your brain it's totally okay to check in and adjust these priorities. So maybe you set a specific time each day or each week to review that prioritization matrix. Do you need to move anything around? If so, not a problem, right? Because especially if you're in a a dynamic work environment or something where things are often changing, you might need to move things around. And similarly, if you have someone to help to talk it through with or a colleague or whatever, that can be a great option as well with the the Eisenhower matrix. So there are a couple of different ways that we can make the Eisenhower matrix or the urgent important matrix a little bit more ADHD friendly because it can be a powerful tool for prioritization, but it can also be a bit overwhelming when our brain thinks that everything is urgent and important, okay? Now, the second approach, and this is an alternative that I really like, I think it is more supportive of an ADHD brain, but still uses the matrix style, is the impact and effort matrix, okay? So we use the same type of four quadrant approach, but instead of urgent and important, we are looking at impact and effort. And I like this one more for an ADHD brain because it's focusing on the level of effort required and the level of impact that project or that task has. So this is what this matrix looks like. First of all, in the top left corner, we have high impact, low effort. Okay, so this is quadrant one. These are easy to accomplish yet highly impactful tasks. Do these all day long. (laughs) If you have a whole list of things that are easy to do and have a big impact, yes, please, let's just do those, okay? Then we move over to the right side of our four quadrants, and this is high impact, high effort. 
So these tasks, they do make a significant impact on your goals, but they're more challenging to complete. They might require more time or more planning. These are still very important, but they take a little bit more effort. So high impact, high effort. Then we go down to the lower left corner, and this is low impact, low effort. So these are easier tasks that you can do. They take low effort, but they don't make a huge contribution to your long-term goals. I really like this quadrant to fill in when I'm kind of in a low energy state, when I have low executive functions, maybe I'm in waiting mode, and so I can't get into deep work, but I can check off a few things that are low energy and they'd be great to get done. That's a great time for those. So these low impact, low effort, quadrant three, bottom left corner, that can be great for any time you're in that type of waiting mode or low executive functions or whatever. Okay. And then finally, we have in the bottom right corner, low impact, high effort. This means they're really hard to do and they don't really have a positive or significant impact. Let's just avoid those as much as possible, right? Minimize them, delegate them, eliminate them if possible. Now, how do we use the impact effort matrix? It's actually the exact same that we talked about with the Eisenhower matrix, except that we're just using different qualifiers. So similarly, write down all of your tasks that you wanna complete and then evaluate the tasks that you listed, but now you're basing them on level of impact and effort. So you wanna go through and categorize those tasks according to quadrant one of high impact, low effort. So you wanna focus on these tasks first. These are quick wins. They have a big impact toward your goals. Then you have quadrant two, which are the high impact, high effort. These you want to probably break down into smaller, more manageable steps and schedule them throughout your calendar, but you do want to do them because they have that high impact. Then we have quadrant three, low impact, low effort. So you can use these tasks to, like I said, fill in the gaps when your energy is low or you're in waiting mode. Maybe you're waiting on someone else to get back to you, that sort of thing. And then quadrant four, low impact, high effort. Let's just avoid those. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, I really like the impact effort matrix for the ADHD brain for a handful of different reasons. This is more geared toward just matrices generally, but first of all, I like it because it simplifies decision-making. So when we can categorize our tasks in this situation based on impact and effort, it really helps to simplify our decision-making process. You can quickly see, oh, this is the amount of energy I have, this is where I'm at, I know where to focus my energy right now, right? And having that broken up based on both effort and impact can make decision-making more easily. Similarly, again, this is matrices in general, but I love the clear visual framework of this. When we can add in the visual component of a matrix, it helps to provide this really clear understanding of where you want to direct your efforts. Now, in terms of this matrix specifically, the impact effort model, I love it because it also allows for personalization. Because what is low effort for one person might be high effort for another. And so you can adjust the quadrants based on your unique strengths. And then also that lever, level of effort can vary for you individually as well from day to day, week to week, depending on whether your executive functions showed up to work. On the days when you have that lower level of executive function or you didn't sleep well or whatever, you might need to adjust what feels like high and low effort. And that's okay. This matrix can meet you where you are with that. So I really like the flexibility of it. So Again, I think the impact effort matrix is really a fantastic option for the ADHD brain. It, it allows us to have more flexibility and really approach our tasks and projects in a way that seems a bit less overwhelming because we can have that process and the flexibility of low effort, high effort when we're thinking about the level of impact. And again, it's all about finding what works best for your brain. Yours might be a, a different approach or a, a slightly different mix, okay? But I really think that using some sort of matrix 
can be useful in taking that long list of tasks, in breaking them down, and in dividing them throughout the four different quadrants so that when you're looking at the thing at the start of your day, you can see, ah, this is where I want to focus. All right. So I know we talked about some kind of complex things today, and I do encourage you to, first of all, grab the workbook at imbusybeingawesome.com slash matrix so that you can really see what I'm talking about and put it into use. And similarly, if you want to pop over to YouTube, you can actually see the, the visuals there too. But let's do a quick recap of what we looked at today. So first of all, we talked about the, the very real obstacles when it comes to prioritization with an ADHD brain, right? It is a challenge because of our struggles with executive functions, time blindness, our distractibility, decision making, all of that mixed together can make prioritization challenging for our ADHD brains, right? But even despite that, it is quite impactful to learn the supports that work for us so that we can prioritize in a way that works for our brain. Because when we can learn how to prioritize in a way that works for us, it can lead to increased productivity and focus on the things that matter most to us, reduced stress, better time management, and a regular progress on your goals, right? It in short, allows you to show up more intentionally with how you use your time doing the things you genuinely want to do. And we looked at two different matrix approaches. The first is the Eisenhower matrix or the urgent important matrix. And then we also looked at the impact effort matrix. And I encourage you to play around with and find the different approaches that work best for you and personalize it to fit your unique brain. In fact, this is one of the things that I like to do with my clients is to find all the different qualifiers that will help you in your situation to prioritize your tasks in this season of life. Now, if your brain is spinning with more nuanced questions, if your brain is thinking, but how do I choose between high impact and high effort items? I have a whole bunch under that second quadrant. Which one of those should I do first? Or how do I actually balance urgent tasks at home versus urgent tasks at work? I mean, they're both really important, right? If your brain is starting to ask these more nuanced questions, I have you covered. These are the topics that we explore within my small group coaching program for ADHD brains. It's called We're Busy Being Awesome. And the August cohort is beginning soon. And enrollment is going to open in a couple of weeks. So if you want to join us, if you want to learn how to prioritize what matters most in your life, and if you want to create a supportive schedule that works for you and that honors those priorities, and you want to learn how to take action on those priorities with less procrastination and follow through on them, check them off the list. I would love to have you join us. You can pop through the link in the show notes to read more or head to imbusybeingawesome.com slash group. You can add your name to the wait list. And if we're enrolling at that time, you can just sign up right there. And then if you have any questions, you can send me an email. I'm Paula at imbusybeingawesome.com. I would love to chat. Send me a DM over on Instagram at imbusybeingawesome. Similarly, if you want to hop on a call, if you want to talk through some questions face-to-face -face on Zoom, you can sign up for a time on imbusybeingawesome.com slash group as well. I'm happy to chat through any questions you have. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for us this week. And if you know of someone else who would love some strategies on learning how to prioritize with their ADHD brain, would you be a rock star and share this episode with them? Send it to them in a text message or snap a screenshot and share it on your Instagram stories. Please note, whatever approach you use, I so appreciate your support in helping me get these tools to even more busy, awesome brains who need them. And also, don't forget to grab the free prioritization matrix workbook. Head to imbusybeingawesome.com slash matrix and grab yours there. Until next time, keep being awesome. I'll talk with you soon.